Can you find a function that is defined everywhere but you cannot draw it? Can you find a function that is defined everywhere but discontinuous everywhere? Can the sum of two discontinuous functions be continuous? And can you find a function that is periodic but does not have the smallest period? The first four questions are pretty tricky, but the fifth one is very concrete and straightforward. So let's solve the fifth one first. The inner limit is cosine k factorial pi x to the power of 2j. When j goes to infinity, because cosine is no greater than 1, so when it is 1, we get 1, but as long as it is smaller than 1, no matter how small the difference is, we get 0. In order for the limit to be 1, cosine expression must be either positive 1 or negative 1, therefore k factorial x must be an integer. Now, when k goes to infinity, k factorial x is an integer when and only when x is a rational number. This fact is also used in the proof of the irrationality of e. You will be surprised how easy it is to prove that e is irrational. Check out this video here. Back to our question. So this expression is 1 when x is rational, but 0 when x is irrational. Because all real numbers are either rational or irrational, so this is a well-defined function over all real numbers. This function has a name, the Dirichlet function, invented by German mathematician Dirichlet. It is literally impossible to draw this function. Even the tip of your pencil is made of a single carbon atom. The graph on the right is often used to represent the Dirichlet function, because really there isn't a better one. So, the Dirichlet function is the answer to our last question, and the Dirichlet function is a function that cannot be drawn precisely according to its definition. Moving on to our second question. As you may guess, the answer is still the Dirichlet function. Without knowing the Dirichlet function, it is really hard to imagine a function that is defined everywhere but that discontinuous everywhere. The Dirichlet function is really the king of counterexamples and the Godzilla of anti-intuition. Recall that a function is continuous at a point c when the value of fc equals the limit of the function when x goes to c. Applying this on the Dirichlet function, we see that the limiting process will depend on whether c is a rational number or an irrational number. So let's focus on the case that c is rational first. So c is p over q, and dc is 1. I can construct this series. It's clearly approaching p over q, which is c, but it's always irrational, because e is irrational. Therefore, this limiting process will always yield 0. Thus, fx is not continuous at any rational point c. How about irrational points? Let's say c is pi, so d pi is 0. And I can just pick the first n digits of pi, and they are all rational. So I can construct a limiting process that's always 1, and it's never equal to the actual value of d pi. So here we go. The second question's answer is Dirichlet function. Defined everywhere, but discontinuous everywhere. Now you know the drill. Can you think about the answer for the third question? Did you get it? If one function is a Dirichlet function, another function is a negative of a Dirichlet function. When you add them together, you get a zero, which is a continuous function. How about the product? We can define gx as zero when x is rational and one when x is irrational. Both fx and gx are discontinuous, but when multiplying together, we get a zero, a constant, therefore continuous. Let's do something even fancier. Can a function be continuous at only given values? Here's a hint. This function is only discontinuous at 1 and e. So, again, 15 seconds. Let's go. How about this function? When x is irrational, it is 0. 
when x is rational, it is a polynomial x minus 1 times x minus e. And this function is only continuous at 1 and e. f1 is exactly 0. And the limit of fx when x goes to 1 has two possible expressions. When x is rational, fx approaches 0 as a polynomial. When x is irrational, fx is already 0. Therefore, the value at 1 is exactly the same as the limit when x goes to 1. And the exact same argument works for the x equals e case. You can extend this trick to construct functions that are only continuous, for example, at integers, which is crazy. Anyway, the answer to the third question is still the Dirichlet function. How about the fourth one? Is Dirichlet function periodic? The answer is yes. For example, 1 is a period of the Dirichlet function. Whether x is rational or irrational, dx plus 1 is always dx. But think about that. 0 0.01 is also a period of Dirichlet function. In fact, arbitrarily small rational number is a period of the Dirichlet function. So the Dirichlet function is a periodic function, but there is no smallest period. That is crazy. How about irrational numbers? Let's say x is an irrational number, then the CU of x, which is the smallest integer that is greater than or equal to x, is an integer, therefore a rational number. So d CU x is 1. However, as the construction you see here, CU x minus x is another irrational number, therefore d CU x minus x is 0. We can conclude that any irrational number is not a period of the Dirichlet function. And this concludes our investigation to the five questions we had at the beginning. I can't express how amazed when I first learned the Dirichlet function. It's like the experience you read War and Peace for the first time or beat Diablo for the first time. And if this is the first time you learn about the Dirichlet function, I hope I successfully passed the joy of mathematics to you.